Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Behroz and on this channel I talk about career and financial success. Now growing up talking about money was kind of a taboo. You can talk about career success, you can talk about achieving other things in life. You can even talk about buying stuff and buying a bigger house, buying a bigger car. That is all fine. But as soon as you talk about I want to get rich, I want to earn more money, it was considered shallow. It wasn't considered cool it wasn't considered nice especially when you're talking in front of your family friends and social circle it is only when i grew up i realized how important money is especially because it can buy you your freedom financial freedom and that is what my goal is and that is what i teach on my channel now talking about financial freedom and talking about the fact that it was difficult for me or in those times to talk about money in this video i want to talk about the myths related to getting rich and getting wealthy what are the myths that people usually hold? I will bust those myths and I will talk about those myths and I will explain why those myths are wrong. And despite having those myths around us for so long and people still calling them out, we can still get rich and we can still get wealthy and we can still achieve the financial freedom that we should all be working towards. Now, one caller before moving forward. In case you find any value from this video, I have to ask for you. One, smash the like button as this keeps you motivated. Second, press the subscribe button along with the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I put a new content out there. Both these actions will mean a lot for my venture, for the content that I'm producing. I will be able to make better and more improved content. Now, let's quit rolling back into the video. Now, I have a list of those myths and I'll read out from here. One is overnight success is a myth. There is no such thing as an overnight success. Overnight success is 10 years in the making. The people you see wealthy, you see rich, you go like, okay, that guy just uh, hit a jackpot, got lucky overnight. No, that's not the case. They have been working on it for a very long time. Now, it could be possible that they didn't have money from, let's say, year one to year nine, and suddenly in year 10, they started making a lot of money. That could be possible just because of compounding. However, whatever they were doing from year zero to year nine has compounded, has added up for them to be able to generate the amount of income they are generating in year 10. I'll give example of my YouTube channel. Now, first day, no views, second day, no views, third day, first month, second month, third month. It took me one year and eight months to monetize. And the amount of money that I earned in the first month from YouTubing was less than $100. However, it is starting to increase and it is compounding. So every other month is like double the month that I had before and double the month I had before and so on and so forth. So it is compounding and it will come a time when it will just skyrocket because I'll start getting some, let's say, good brand deals, some good affiliate income, or maybe even selling my own courses at some point in time. And suddenly when I start doing all of that, I will have a lot of following, right? So currently I am just building a lot of following and this is taking some time, which is fine. And maybe it takes me nine years to build the following. And as soon as I have a big following on social media, suddenly on the last year, in the 10th year, I will just sell a course which will make for all the money that I have been wishing to earn, which is again because of compounding. So there is work of nine years before I hit the overnight success. Again, overnight success is a myth. You have to work your ass for that money. And hence, don't just think that you will get lucky. Now talking about luck, another myth that people have is luck alone determines wealth well yes and no i agree that you have to be lucky but for you to be lucky you have to put yourself out there you cannot just assume that you will sit on your couch be watching netflix and you will just get lucky for you to get lucky for instance talking about career change for you to get a job you have to put yourself out there you have to apply for jobs and only then you can get lucky and get your good break or big job or big uh, dollar or money title or job, whatever it is that you're looking for. But you cannot just sit on your couch and expect that someone will come and offer you a job. You have to go, you have to search for jobs, you have to apply, you have to go for interviews, you have to put yourself out there, you have to sell yourself before you get hired for that ideal job that you're looking for. Similarly, if you want to get lucky on social media with the putting content out there. Again, you have to put your content out there. You have to produce videos on YouTube. You have to put posts on social media. And it would be over time that someone will watch your post, will like it, will appreciate it. And then it may magnify it, may become a snowball effect and can make you get lucky eventually. But it will not happen till you don't start. Similarly, how I got lucky with my channel was when I started making videos around getting hired, 
acing an interview, getting into Procter and Gamble or other big companies. It was only then that my videos or my channel started to rock and really help me get lucky. Now, when people see that ch channel and they go like, um, fine, he got lucky because he worked for Procter and Gamble. He's making videos on Procter and Gamble. How lucky for his channel to work well? Well, before I started making videos on Procter and Gamble, it took me like 20, 30 videos, which I was making and trying to find my niche. I didn't know my niche what my niche was. It was only over a period of time after dabbling with a few videos, after dabbling with different contents, I was able to figure out what my niche was. So you will not be able to figure out what your niche is, what your target is, what is that you want till you start trying, till you start putting yourself out there, till you start taking action. So take action and only taking action will make you get lucky. Number three is high income guarantees wealth. It's a big myth. I know a lot of people who earn far more than me, twice or thrice more than me. However, they have holes in their pockets. What I mean is their expenses are so high that whatever they earn, they're not able to save anything. Now, they may seem rich because they have the best of the cars, they have the best of the houses. However, for the most part, the people I know are in debt. So they're not wealthy, they're rich. Rich is all about showing your wealth. Wealth is all about having wealth, which generates more wealth on top. However, these guys I'm talking about, they have high incomes, but they don't have wealth because their incomes are all diluted by high expenses. The expenses they are paying for the debt, they have to pay the mortgage, they have to pay for their cars and for expensive and luxury lifestyle that they've maintained. So what has happened is as their income was increasing, they were also inflating their lifestyle equally or even ahead of the income, hoping that eventually the income will catch up and will settle for the lifestyle. However, once you get used to stepping up your lifestyle every time, every year, you are just in that race, especially when you're trying to keep up with the Jones, with the comparison that you have with your other friends and family. And if you're doing all that, then you just keep spending. So it is that comparison game, which forces you to continue to invest more in your expenses, in your lifestyle. And hence, eventually you still end up not being wealthy. So it's not about the income. It's about your lifestyle. Can you maintain your lifestyle below your income? And can you be happy with that? If yes, you will end up rich. That, like this, is, there is no other way. You have that extra money that you are saving, you invest that money, that money compounds and eventually will make you rich. It is not about the income, it is how much you can save and can you control and optimize your lifestyle or not. Now, the next myth is that inheritance is the only way to bring about financial success, which is that if my parents are rich, if my grandparents are rich, they will pass on their money to me. And only that is how I will get rich. Otherwise, there is no means for me getting rich. So all the people I see around me are rich because they have inheritance. It's not because they have worked hard. Well, this is a myth as well. Now, let me share some facts. It was found that 74% of millennials believe that millionaires inherited their money and more than 52% of baby boomers think the same, which is people do think when they see a rich guy, oh, this person didn't work hard. It's just because they got a big inheritance. So most of the people do believe that, but it is wrong. Now, let me share with you some facts. These are the studies done on millionaires, and these are true facts. Only 21% of millionaires received any inheritance at all. So all the millionaires that you see out of 100, only 21 received any inheritance at all. Just 16% inherited more than $100,000. Other than that, six, less than 16% only received less than $100,000, which is less compared to the millionaire status. And get this, the only 3% received an inheritance at or above 1 million. So it was only 3% who really became millionaire because of inheritance. Other than that, all of them either earned less than $100,000 or otherwise only 21% have received any inheritance, which means 79% of millionaires that you see around you did not inherit a single dollar. And hence they were rich or they became millionaire because of their own hard work, because of them putting themselves out there and hence getting lucky. So this is a myth as well, which is when you see someone rich and you go like, oh, their parents got them money. That's not true. Now, the next myth that I have is that debt is an inevitable part of your lifestyle. Completely wrong. Now, I do buy this argument for a house purchase because it's a big purchase. You might need some mortgage for it. Period. I understand. Makes sense. However, for cars or for any other lifestyle maintenance, you should not be going into debt at all and you should not be needing any debt and especially no debt for investing purposes. Because when you get debt, assuming that you can use it for investing purposes, there is a good chance you will fall in trouble if in case you are not able to service that debt. 
it could be anything. Let's say you get some debt to buy a house, which you will put in rent, which is fine. You'll getting rental income, which is good. But what if rental income stops coming? What if the market goes array or down? What happens then? You will lose the house. If you lose the house, you are not able to get the payments because there is no renter. The renter is not paying or they are not renting anymore because they left the house. You can't find a renter anymore. And now you're paying monthly mortgage payments, which you actually can't afford because you were hoping that the rental will continue paying and hence you can't pay anymore. So don't try to get rich by taking debt and then investing. It is okay to take out debt. However, you have to be very careful that even for instance, if that particular tenant is not there for a year, you can still service the mortgage. You can still pay the payments, the monthly payments. Then it is fine. Then it's kind of a high risk game that you are taking. It is fine. However, you don't really need to go the debt route to get rich. You just need to save and invest. Saving and investing will compound your money and eventually will make you rich. I understand this is a get slow rich formula. However, this is a get surely rich formula as well. Otherwise, if you just go high risk, if you go for debt, yes, it's a rich overnight rich formula. However, there is equal chance of getting extremely poor bankrupt overnight as well. It is high risk. I rather you get rich surely, but slowly as against trying to get rich fast, but getting into a trap. So avoid any debt traps. Next one is that investing is only for the rich because they understand money, they understand investments and hence only they can invest. Well, my friend, you don't need to understand investments. All you need to understand is that there is something called stock market, which is a very strong and a very healthy way for you to get rich. What you're essentially doing is when you invest your money in the stock market, you're buying a piece of a business. Somebody has their business. They are selling part of their business. And when they sell part of their business, they give you part of their profits as, sh as shares or as dividends. So you enjoy those dividends, you enjoy those profits. So you get value by buying piece of different businesses when you invest in stock market. You don't really need to know a lot of about investing in stock market. All you need to do or all you need to know is instead of buying a particular business or a particular stock in the stock market, you just buy a bundle of stocks, which is an ETF. Best thing to do is buy an S&P 500 index ETF. It has historically been delivering around 10% return, which is good enough for you to compound your money and get rich. So instead of finding that needle in the haystack, that right investment, that stock, that right business, just buy the entire haystack. It will give you good eight to 10% returns, which it has historically delivered, and that should be good enough for you. So you really don't need to be Warren Buffett. Yeah, Warren Buffett is getting returns higher than 10% which is fine, but they know a lot as well. Such people have studied investment. They study those companies. Me, I don't have time to do that. I have a day job. I have family. I have hobbies. I have my passion as well. I don't have time to do that. So what I do is I just invest in an index. So you don't really need to know a lot about investing. All you need to do is just open an account with the broker, invest in S&P 500, and that should be good enough. Now, the next myth that I have on my list is that only wealth attracts wealth, which is if you have money, only then you can get rich. If you don't have money to begin with, you cannot start a business, you cannot invest, you cannot get rich. Wrong. You can start a business without any money. This is me. I just had my phone when I started making my first video and that's it. And that phone I didn't buy for making videos, by the way. I had that phone just because I have a phone, I carry a phone. And when I decided to start making videos, I just started using that phone and that was it. So you really don't need to go about buying a gas station, buying a grocery store or buying some restaurant. No, you don't need to invest like that. You can just invest your time. Essentially, there are two ways of doing it. One is to invest money. If you have money, you invest money to make money. But if you don't have money, then you invest your time to make money. This is what I did. I didn't have much money. I decided I want to have a side income or have a side hustle and I wanted to post and make videos on YouTube. So what I did was I just used my uh, mobile camera and I started shooting videos. All I did was use my time. So I invested my time. So if you don't have money, invest your time. You can make money by investing your time as against just investing money. And now when I started earning money from my channel, now I'm reinvesting that money back into the business and upgrading my equipment, upgrading my capability so I get better at it. And eventually, as I said, I will achieve the compounding effect because I'm investing back both time and money in my venture. Next one is financial advisors will make you successful and rich. No, 
uh, the fees that are involved with financial advisors are very high. And most of the financial advisors that you will find or most of the mutual funds that they maintain or manage, they are not able to outperform the average market returns. So it is simple and easy to just buy the average market return index, which in my opinion is S&P 500. If you have a belief in the North American stock market, just buy the S&P 500 index and that is good enough. The fees are very, very low. It's like 0.1 or 0.05 when you invest in ETFs like S&P 500 ETFs as against investing with a mutual fund where the fees are as high as one to two percent, which will eat up in your profits completely. So don't go for financial advisors. Just keep it very simple. Open a brokerage account and invest in the stock market using an ETF, an ETF which is low cost, an ETF which is like S&P 500, which is an amalgamation of 500 companies. Next myth that I have is that more work hours means more money. No, that is not true. Yes, that is true when you are renting your time, like when you have a nine to five job, because as long as you're working, you're making more money. You have a nine to five job, you're making money. You can be working a second job after five and you can be making more money as well. However, start thinking of things which uh, bring leverage, which can bring scale. So writing a book, L writing a book brings leverage is because you can write one book, you sell one book, good. But for the next sale, you don't need to write a book again. It just sells, the copies sell. I make a video, I make one video, it sells, that's good. But now I benefit from scale because this video is going places and it is earning more ad revenues. And as it earns re ad revenues, those ad revenues are shared with me. Similarly, there could be other similar things like making an application. If you make an app, you make an app once you invest in it and then you just sell the same formula, the same algorithm again and again, you benefit from scale, you benefit from leverage. So you don't really need to work more hours. If you invest in the right thing, if you invest your time once in the right way, you can achieve leverage, you can achieve scale. So whenever you're thinking of business, think of business in this term, as against trying to think of business in terms of buying some restaurant or buying some physical property, you can do so as well, but it is very difficult to scale that. It is much easier to scale a digital course. I can make a digital course on how to make money, how to get rich, how to invest. And once I make the course, I will make the course once and then I can just simply sell the course again and again and make money just out of leverage and out of scale. Last myth is success financially requires sacrifice, sacrificing on your happiness. That is completely wrong. I'm a big frugal guy. I'm majorly frugal. However, I am also able to live my rich life. What I do is I've made different buckets. There are certain buckets where I cut and I'm very brutal. I don't spend money a lot there. I'll give you an example. Like we are a family of four, two kids, two adults, but we just have one car. However, when we travel, when we go on vacations, we splurge so much so that there are times when we even go business class. We fly business class. I really enjoy the luxury. I enjoy the comfort. So I spend a lot on my vacations but I cut brutally on, let's say, things like grocery, eat outs and car. So I save money there and then I invest where it really matters. It is not everything that I enjoy. I don't enjoy cars a lot. There are people who enjoy cars a lot and maybe it makes sense for them to cut from their vacations and entertainment and invest everything in the car because that is what brings happiness to them. However, what I've done is I've realized what brings happiness to me. What brings happiness to me is spending time on vacations with my family and I want to be as luxurious, as comfortable as possible. I don't enjoy cars, so I've cut money from cars and invest in my vacations. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this video was helpful and kind of gave you some ideas as to how you should go about thinking about money and with regards to getting rich. In case you found this video helpful, I'm sure you'll find another video very useful on my channel where I talk about my financial freedom journey. You can check it out here. Other than that, there is another video where I talk about how you can go about investing in the stock market. You can check out that video here. Thank you.